Boom, smooth transition. Uh, in today's class, we're going to be diving into designs, and we're going to be talking about some of you know, my favorite features in the platform. So be it you're, you're brand new to KW, or you're just brand new to designs in general, or you're, you're seasoned in designs, I think there's going to be little nuggets in here for everyone, because we're going to be spanning from the, the tried and true, sort of just base, powerful features in designs, all the way to some brand new stuff that just got released. So my goal is by the end of this session, everyone's mind is going to be a little bit blown to be like, wow, I didn't know I could do that. And it's going to be really fun. So for anyone who doesn't know me or who we haven't had the chance to meet before, my name is Jason Spars. I'm the Director of Innovation and Technology for KW Integrity Lakes. I'm also the Market Center Tech Trainer for that office and Certified KWU Trainer. Uh, and like I just said, we're going to be talking about designs and it's going to be really sweet. So I'm going to spend the majority of this session on screen share uh, as such. Uh, it's pretty difficult for me. I'm on one monitor right now to monitor the chat. So if anybody does have any questions, I'll be I'll be pausing and you know briefly throughout the the session asking for questions. But don't hesitate to unmute yourself, speak up, and ask your question. I will do my best to get through the chat at the end of the class to make sure that nothing was missed. But if you type in a question and I don't get to it right away, I'm not ignoring you. I just haven't seen it yet. All right, so without further ado, we're just gonna dive right in because we have a lot to cover today and only an hour to do it. So can everybody see my KW command login page right now? Sweet, I've done too many of these where I've talked for like five minutes. I'm like, Jason, you can't see anything, so good. So the first thing to do is gonna be log into KW command, obviously. Uh, if you've never been here before, the URL for that is agent.kw.com. Your login information would have been provided to you on your, your welcome email from your market center. Now, if we're looking to navigate to KW Command's designs platform, we're gonna find that on the left here, right where it says designs. It's a little picture of an easel pad and looks like kind of a paintbrush. And a little pro tip as we're getting through here, if you're new to the platform and you don't know what all these logos mean, if you just click this red KW in the corner, it's going to expand all of the text. So you can actually just read it instead of having to memorize the cute little paintbrush and easel pad. So if we click in here, your, your platform may or may not look like mine as it's loading. Uh, what we have here are just templates I've worked with in the past. Uh, some of this should look pretty familiar as we start to go through here. Um, anywhere we're at in this platform, we're always going to see this button here that says create design when we're in designs. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and it's going to give us some options. So we have four different types of designs that we can create here. Email, designs for social posts, and designs for print material. We also have a little neighborhood video we can create. That one's pretty cut and dry, but if we do have time at the end of this, just making a note so I don't forget, uh, we can jump into this if we have time. Um, if not, this might be the one we skip, just because it's, it's really, really simple to sort of you know, get in there. It's just a guided template sort of questionnaire and then it generates this video for you. Um, it's pretty fun. Try it out if we don't have a chance to get to it, but I'm going to do my best to make sure we get through all four of these today. So we're going to start at print. <clears throat> so Claire, just to the, to the group, what kind of materials do you think we'll be making when we're talking about print materials? Maybe open house flyers. Right, yeah, open open house flyers, 100%. What else would we be making? Door hangers. Door hangers for door knocking, absolutely, right? Marketing materials always come to mind when we talk about these print materials. Just sold, just listed, postcards, uh, open house flyers, like Heather said, and door hangers, like Arsenio said. Um, but... I mean, and that's always where everybody's heads go when we talk about print materials, but there's a lot more that we can do within this. Um, now, granted, we are going to be focusing on those marketing materials today, uh, but I did just want to highlight that not only do we have really great marketing materials for both listings um, and buyers that you have coming up, but we also have listing presentations in here, right? We have, I believe it's six, don't, I'll probably be proved wrong in a moment. Um, we have several different sort of listing uh, presentation templates that we can use. Right here, we got five of them you can pop in here. They're like 20 page templates. You can come in, you can edit them completely, add or remove as many pages as you want. Same thing goes for buyer presentations, um, information on Keller Mortgage. 
and even some business basic assets like business card templates uh, and letterheads. So outside of the marketing materials where everybody's heads go, when we think about sort of print material, there's a lot that you can actually use for your business that doesn't involve um, marketing for real estate. Okay. After that being said, we're going to talk about some marketing materials. Um, so I'm just going to use a uh, just a generic template. Uh, we'll do a coming soon flyer. So as you can see by navigating on the left here, there is no shortage of templates we can use for listing materials, buyer materials, lead generation, business basic, um, holiday specific materials, uh, professional services, there's all sorts of stuff we can use. So for this one, I'm just gonna do, you know, coming soon. Uh, I want something with some property information on it because I wanna show you off some cool stuff. So I like this slate gray one, I think that's a pretty slick color. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Shoot, however, I did just get ahead of myself. So I'm gonna actually gonna break up the flow here and we're gonna go back because before we dive into the template, and again, this is a common mistake a lot of people make, we wanna make sure that we're all set up before we start diving in because it's gonna make your experience in designs a lot easier. And by that, I mean, because it just happened to me, it's really easy to get swept away with all of these different really cool design templates that we have. I mean, there's hundreds of them, but before we do, we wanna pause and take a second because I wanna highlight this less visually appealing bar at the very top here. And on the very right, we see a section called assets. Now, we're not really gonna get into marketing strategy here. I'm by no means a marketing expert. I am an expert in command. So that's what we're gonna be sticking on. But one thing I do know about marketing is it's really important to establish your brand. And a couple pieces are really important in establishing that brand and that's color palettes, images, logos, bond. Right? We want to have, make sure that's consistent through all of our marketing materials. So when we're in this assets tab, we actually have an opportunity to set up all of our brand assets to make sure that when we're in designs and working our materials, all of our brand assets are easily accessible. So over here under the assets tab, we have a few different options on the left here. We're not going to dive into every single one of these, but we're going to hit the big ones. Right, And the first one is going to be colors and fonts. So as you can see here, I already have two different color palettes built out here. The one on the left is for real estate sales, the one on the right are for what I use for our real estate investing materials. If you wanna add another color palette, you can do so on the right here where it says add color palette. So if I were to click this, I would get a blank color palette. From here, you can click in and you can either you know drag this little guy around and find that one that works just right. Or if you know the color code, you can put in the hex number and get the exact color code. For example, the KW red, right? If you're curious what that hex code is, it's right there. So you know what, I'm gonna do one more. I'm just gonna copy this and drop this in the chat. I don't know if it let me copy, so I'm just gonna write it down just in case. So we can save your front desk staff one email from everybody here asking what that is. So how do I access that chat? Here we go. No, that didn't work. So I'm gonna type this in for everyone here. So if you're looking for the exact KW red, that's that hex code for you. It's all in the chat. Okay, so not only can we add colors and save these different palettes here, but we can also add fonts. Now there's obviously a huge font library already in designs, that's okay. But if you're coming over from somewhere, maybe you've purchased a font or had a custom font created or have a font that you just loved and you've used on all your Canva marketing materials and it's not offered in KW Designs, you can go ahead and upload that font right here by clicking upload and just drag it in, you know, downloading that font and dragging it in. If anybody wants to do this in real time, I don't actually have a custom font I can use to demonstrate this, but let me know, we can connect and I can walk you through the process of how to import that font into your brand assets. Moving down, we have images, right? And this is gonna be a bunch of those embarrassing realtor headshots that we all have, um, but any online images that you own, right? Like this is one I use for just the please remove shoe sign, but the majority of this are just gonna be headshots because there's gonna be a lot of that on our marketing materials. 
upload those. Again, we just have this upload button in the right corner. We're starting to see a theme here. You can either do it from your device, Google Drive, or you can drag and drop it. We also have text. Now this text and these images, you might see some initial ones in here. These are gonna be pulled directly from your marketing profile, which should have been set up when you were joined KW. Um, this is gonna be just a lot of, you know, text assets that are gonna be used frequently in your marketing materials, like your office address, your phone number, your office number, your company name, your bio, anything that, you know, KW feels like will need to be used on a fairly regular basis can be stored right here and accessed easily through designs. And then finally, we have our logos. And these are the big four, right? Because the logos are also really important. You all should have received a, a logo packet when you joined Command and if, or when you joined KW. And if it's been a few years and you totally lost yours, that's fine. You can email your front desk and they can send you a packet of every single logo you would conceivably need. And I really recommend having a bunch of different logos in here because there's going to be a bunch of different backdrops for putting this over. So we want to make sure that we have a logo that fits over every single kind of backdrop we need. So we're not trying to make a design, have to leave designs, search our computer for that logo, download it, upload it. We can just grab it right from the toolbar if we have it here in our brand assets. So this is anything from our company logos to our business logos to compliance logos, anything you think you would need to use on a regular basis, you can upload right here. Now, there are a few other items here like elements. These are fun little stickers and you know, kind of graphics you can use, videos and additional files. Um, but we're not going to jump into these right now because again, we've got a lot to cover and not a ton of time. Any questions about the brand assets before we move back into the templates? Good stuff. All right. So we're going to use this toolbar at the very top to just navigate right back over to templates. And like I said before, we're going to do a coming soon template here, and we're going to go ahead and use this. So this would be great, you know, for canvassing a neighborhood, right? We want to pass out some flyers. Um, in here, we also have, you know, open house materials we can use. And actually, we'll stick with open house. I know Heather said open house, and I like that. So we're going to go ahead and use one of these. Probably not a ton of open houses over 4th of July weekend, but there's also an opportunity to lean in and have some really fun open house parties. So with this open house material, we see, you know, just a litany of all these different designs we can use. And that can feel a little overwhelming. So at the top here, we actually have options to filter these down. Like our signal mentioned, we can do door hangers specific for marketing our open house, right? If we're canvassing the neighborhood. Flyers, these might be good for, you know, inside the open house when people come in. We can also do bifolds, trifolds, and then even standard postcards if we want to create some marketing material that we mail out to the neighborhood. So for this one, we'll do a flyer. And again, we'll stick with, this one's pretty cool. I like the gray, it's kind of fun. Actually, I want to show you something else. So we're not going to use that one. I wanted to show you how to change the colors and you can't do that with that gray design. All right, we're gonna go ahead and use this one. Pretty standard open house flyer. So we click on it, it takes us from our template sort of toolbox into our actual design house. I want <laughs> you to find better, better terms for these, I'm sure there are. Okay, so first thing we see, we see our template right here. We see all our tools on the left. Much like we uh, move through our applets in command, we can move through the different sort of features we can use here on the left. So we have images. And again, we have my assets. We just talked about these. These are right here, easily accessible. We also have some workspace and some stock images. So these are both gonna be a bit of the same thing, but these are all stock images we can use. We have access to, we have the rights to, so you don't need to worry about getting one of those nasty cease and assist letters for your marketing material. Uh, we have all sorts of different categories that you can just pull stock images from. Text logos, different elements, and my favorite, KWLS. So we're gonna be hanging out here and we're gonna be talking about animation in a little bit. But before we get into that, 
I want to show you a little bit of how we can work within this design, right? So it's, it's pretty self-explanatory as far as just clicking and changing. So when it comes to editing text, we click on the text and we see we have a whole toolbar that should be really reminiscent to, you know, Microsoft Word or any sort of text tool. We can drag, resize this, and we can even click in these boxes to edit this text. Now there's a couple different ways to edit the text. So one, right, we can do this. And maybe I wanna call this not open house, but open house party, because it's gonna be a 4th of July party. So I can just click right in there, edit that as is, great. Now we might have text boxes that are a little smaller or you know, like this bullet pointed one. I'm not really in the mood to dive in here and try to work within this to, to change this tiny text. Now, sure, I could zoom in and make it a little easier to see using the zoom in tool at the bottom here. But the way that I usually will work within text, especially if it's a longer you know, paragraph or sort of bullet pointed like this, is I like to use what's called the typewriter tool. So if we look at our toolbar here, it's not gonna be super obvious, but if we hover over, it looks kind of like a, like a black and white little eraser that we used to have in whenever we used pencils in school. <laughs> and it's the typewriter tool. So we can click that. And it's going to pull up this text in a much, in my opinion, much easier to work with format. So I can go ahead and say, I don't want rich hardwood floors. I want gleaming hardwood floors. Um, you know, spacious backyard. Fence. Nah, I don't know. No. I'm not saying I'd necessarily make these uh, changes, but obviously we want to make this specific to our house. Maybe this doesn't have a spacious backyard. So we're going to say, to amazing parts, right? Save changes. So now what we've done there, oops. Yeah, it just took a little bit to uh, get on there. So what we've done there now we can see has been added down there at the bottom. So let's talk about color, right? This is that KW red, this is great, but I don't use the KW Red in a lot of my marketing, right? I wanna use my colors for my marketing materials. So I can just click on this box, this general box, that's the color red. And I can see up here, I get a couple of color wheels. So I can change the, how translucent it is. <laughs> I'm not even gonna to try to say that word, or I can change the color. So I'm gonna change this fill color from this KW Red to one of my colors. So to access my colors, I click on library colors here. And we're gonna see my brand assets. And if you remember, I had two different palettes so I can toggle between my main palette or my investment palette. We're gonna use my main palette and I'm gonna use this cool slate blue that I like oh so much. Okay, let's work on switching some more of this stuff out. So now we need to do this logo. Zoom down a little bit. Okay, get that logo highlighted. And as you see, I clicked on the logo, it automatically pulls over my logos because it says, hey, it looks like you're about to work on a logo. So I'm gonna find a KW logo, I wanna swap that with. I'm gonna click this button that says replace logo. And that's just gonna swap that over. Now you might wanna go all white on that. I kinda like the red because there's some red text in here. But you have options, right? We have, we have all sorts of different logos we can use. Now, same with the headshot, right? No offense, Lisa. I've got to put myself in there. So what happened here was that, there we go, I triple clicked. Click it once. I go over to images. I'm going to go to my assets. And again, I'm going to replace image with my headshot. Right, we can swap out this text, all this stuff. I'm not gonna recreate this entire flyer because you get the picture, right? We edit this font, we make it match our stuff. If for whatever reason, I don't remember you know, my, my office number, I can always go into text, my assets, and then this is where we can access all of that information like we talked about in the brand assets stage. But what I really wanna highlight here is our integration with the KWLS because this is a really fun feature. Because of course, I wanna make all of this text information match, right? Like the date, the time, the features, but I also wanna have the images of the actual house in there. So if we're doing an open house, I assume that this is already gonna be on the MLS. As such, we can go to this KWLS tab and we can actually search for this property. So I'm gonna just put in, um, so 
This is a property I closed on a while ago. Let's see if it's still in here. Looks like it is, great. So I'm just gonna use this because I know this has some professional photos that we can use. All right, so maybe with the first one, I wanna have the front of the building. So I just click on this image. And again, I don't add the image because that's just gonna drop it in the middle. I don't wanna set it as the background. I wanna replace that image. So it's already formatted properly. So there we go. Same thing, I'm gonna click on that smaller image and let's drop this cool little living room shot in here. Perfect, and then let's get one of the kitchen. Nah, we'll do dining room. There's really no good kitchen pictures. All right, so using this KWLS tool, I don't have to worry about, you know, going in my inbox, finding the, photos that our photographer sent, downloading them, recycling them. I can simply go to KWLS, type in the property address, click on it, and all of the photos that are shown on the MLS are right here at my fingertips. Not only that, but say I wanna add, you know, we have the, the bed, bath, the square footage, the listed price. I don't have to toggle back and forth between the MLS and here to get all that information. So I can click listing details and all of that info is gonna be right here. All right, so I can click in here use my typewriter tool, and then I can just see at a glance. Great, price, 220. Built in, 1922. Bed, bath, square foot, I um, mean, you get the picture. Uh, this saves us a lot of toggling, a lot of going back and forth, having everything right here at our fingertips. So if we have any questions about how we use the KWLS integration to really quickly and easily make this marketing flyer specific to our property that we're gonna be marketing. Right, now when we're done, we have a couple options. One, we can actually order prints. So if I click order print here, oh, that only works for postcards. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I'll show you that in a little bit. But we can uh, send out to have like a hard stock matte or glossy print uh, printed out for us. If you're curious, it's about a three to five day turnaround. So maybe we don't want to wait that long or we don't really want to spend that much money on it, right? We're just going to print it in the office. From here, we can just download it, either a PDF or a JPEG. Um, typically for this, I would probably do, I'd probably do a PDF. Um, but you can do a high quality PDF download and then just print it from your office printers, just like that. Okay, um, one more thing I wanted to show you in print materials. Do you have any questions about sort of how to do pull of photos and anything from the KWLS? Great. Now there's one more feature with that KW, KWLS integration that I really, really love. So we're gonna dive back into print designs. And I'm gonna show you this on a postcard because there are um, a lot of great options for establishing you as a neighborhood expert. Because maybe you're right watching this saying, well, I don't have any open houses coming up. I don't have any listings to market, but I still really wanna get some marketing materials out there. Let's just market to entire neighborhoods, right? You don't need specific homes to be a neighborhood expert. You just need neighborhoods and data. And we have a lot of that. So in here, we're gonna dive into This is under the buyer section and it's a section called neighborhood snaps. So this is a way that we can easily get out neighborhood, mark, neighborhood market information and statistics to people. So for this one, we're gonna do some standard postcards and I'm just gonna go ahead and use this one. So editing this information is gonna be pretty much exactly the same as I just showed you. So we're not gonna dive into a lot of that stuff, but this is a good example of when those stock images may come in handy. Right, so let's say I don't wanna use this image exactly. Yeah. Gotta give me some time to load, one moment. I don't want to use this image exactly. I want to use a stock image. So I can just go to workspace and then again, maybe some like 
lifestyle home activities or, whoops, right, neighborhood images, and really whatever we want to do. And then we can come in here, we can replace that, easy peasy. But what I really want to show you is how to replace this information, right? So for this one, let's edit this text. And we're not going to do Barton Hills. We're going to say Kingfield. Because that's where that listing was that I used for the open house exam. Well, your next move be to Kingfield. Great. Well, let's go edit this information. Now, as we see, this is one big block. So I can't come in here and individually edit these numbers or this information. And generally, I don't want to be toggling back and forth through InfoSparks to get that information. So I can come right back here to KWLS. And instead of listings, I'm going to toggle over to snapshots. I'm going to search for neighborhoods. So I'm going to say Kingfield, comma, Minneapolis. Here it is. And as we see, we have a couple different options just for the different templates, but we're going to want to match this one to the exact one we have. So again, instead of saying add, instead of saying use as background, we're going to replace this image. And just like that, will your next move be to Kingfield? Has the average listing price, average sold price, total active, total pending, average days on market, and average price per square foot. Any questions on how to utilize the neighborhood snap to make these marketing materials? Sweet. Now, one more feature I want to show that we haven't gotten to yet is this is a multi-page um, template, right? It's a postcard. So there's a front and a back. So as we see in the bottom right corner here, it says pages, one of two. So in order to toggle between pages, we just click this. I can select my second page. And then here again, I can change this text with the typewriter tool. Swap out this headshot with my assets. Swap out the logo. And in about 10 seconds, we just made a neighborhood specific postcard. Pretty easy. Ooh, super good question, Tracy. See, I told you I'd do my best to get in there. Um, the neighborhood stats for these are updated every 30 days. So it's monthly. So it, it's definitely not, you know, pinpoint accurate, super specific, especially when the market's, you know, changing like it is and like we expect it to continue to do in the coming months. But for sake of ease, you really can't beat it. Now, there are some other options. If you want to get hyper specific with that neighborhood information and you don't mind toggling back and forth between InfoSparks or the MLS uh, listing page, I will show you a couple other templates you can use to get up to the minute information on your marketing materials instead of using those snaps. So if we are gonna go back into templates here, and I believe this is in, it's either in listing or lead generation. So under the listings tab, there's one that says local expert. So these are designs that are designed specifically to let you give neighborhood market information without using those KWLS snapshots. So in here, you can come in and you can actually look up the exact up to the day data from either InfoSparks or your North Star MLS homepage. And you can just manually input that into these templates as well. So super good question. And I'm glad we got to that. Any other questions before we move on to uh, social media? Good stuff. All right, so I am actually just going to back out of here.
Okay, and then we're going to be putting a pin in print and we're going to be moving into social. Now, the social media and the print interface here, right, this design house we have, it's very, very similar, almost identical. The only difference is that they're formatted differently, right? Like if you recall when we were doing the open house flyers, we had options like postcard, door hanger, bifold, trifold. Well, in the social media, in the social platform here, those categories change, obviously, to things like social wide, social square, social stories. So wide is going to be formatted best for Facebook posts. Square is going to be formatted best for Instagram posts. And stories will be formatted appropriately for both. Okay. So there's um, some really great templates in here. And there's a holiday coming up that I think we should make a little post for, right? So we will do a little 4th of July post in here. And in this, I'm actually gonna show you, because like I said, it's very similar to the print material. There's not a lot of variance in how we get in here, how we edit it, how we you know, use our brand assets to make it our own. But there's one thing we can do on social posts that we can't do on print material, and that's create GIFs. GIFs, GIFs, we can have that debate outside of class. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. And it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna click on the month of July as far as holidays. And this is gonna pull in all of the holidays in the month of July. So it's not just the 4th of July, but we have, you know, happy Canada Day uh, and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one for a Facebook post. So it's going to be pretty generic because, right, it's a, it's a Facebook post. So the majority of that text is going to be put in through Facebook. We just need a really cool image and an image that moves because we're going to make this into a GIF. Now, you can do this with any piece of material in here. I'm just gonna show you this one because I like the colors, I think they're fun. So first things first, of course, we gotta switch that logo. Okay, and then that's really all the editing we need to do here. But what we're gonna do now is use this toolbar on the left and we're gonna scroll all the way down to a new section called animation. Now in here, we have a lot of different options, right? Bounce in, swing in. Fade in, and right, you get the picture. Scrapbook B is kind of crazy. Zoom out. So let's do fade in. And that's moving a little too quick for me. So I want this in and out. Let's try three seconds. This will slow it down a little bit. That's right, a little slow. We're going to do 2.5, <laughs> not 52. Oh my God. Oh, can I do halves? There we go. Got to use the clicker, I guess. Love it. So that's about it, right? Uh, we don't have to worry about page duration. So if there's like a multi-page one, you can add different animation to different pages and it'll sort of carousel through. For this one, we're just going to do just one. We'll keep it simple for now. So we found the animation we like out of, obviously there's a ton of these. Actually, I'm really curious what neon is. I don't like that one bit. We're gonna stick with fade in. So now we download it. But instead of downloading this as a JPEG or a PNG or PDF, at the very bottom here, we're gonna download this as a video and GIF. So the process takes, you know, a little bit, but you can just see it up here at the top. It's been downloaded. And now all we have to do is go over to our Facebook page, post, and just like we're going to post any other video or photo, we just drag over or search for this new downloaded file. And it's going to upload it to Facebook as a nice little short video that automatically plays. And it's going to look just like this. Pretty cool, huh? Any questions about creating these GIFs or using this animation to add a little bit of pop to our uh, social media materials? Was there anybody here who did not know they could do that? All right, is he going to use it, Arsenio? Love it. Yes, definitely. 
Sweet. All right, so now we are gonna move out of print and social into a different platform within designs and that's our email builder. So before we do, are there any other questions about the templates, how to manipulate these, use these, um, build your brand assets, anything we talked about that we wanna discuss before we move on to a different section? Okay, so yet again, we're going to go to create design, and this time we're going to click on email. And like I said before, print and social, almost identical in how we use them, how we work with them, how we build the templates. The only difference are, you know, the type of templates we can work with. Email, on the other hand, is very different than those two. So it's going to take us to a, a different sort of design builder. So from here, it's going to first show us a lot of different templates we can use. A lot of these are created by KWRI. And we also have the option in the top right corner to start from blank. So for this one, I'm just gonna use, there was a featured listing one I really liked. Where'd that go? This one? Yeah, sure. We'll check it out. Perfect. So this is gonna be an email. And in this exact one, we have a few listings that we wanna get out to the public, right? We, we wanna send this, blast this out to our sphere of influence and make sure they know all the best homes that we have coming for sale. So as we see here, this looks a lot different, right? This looks a lot more like our website builders where we have our content on the left, a bunch of widgets on the right that we can utilize. Anything from text blocks and images lock blocks to link buttons to videos to neighborhood snaps. So we're gonna go through and, and work through just a couple of these things, but we probably won't get to every feature. Now, one thing about these emails is it's gonna auto embed all this information from your marketing profile. So if you wanna see what it's actually gonna look like, you can always utilize this preview button, this little eyeball, and you can see how it's gonna brand this material. If this information does not look correct when you see this, you can simply go to your marketing profile and that's where you can make the changes to make sure that this information is reflecting correctly. Okay, so let's get some listings in here. So all of these are individual sort of widgets, if you will. So in order to edit them, I click them and I click the edit pencil. Now, before I start searching for photos and looking up that MLS information to fill all this in, I'm going to go ahead and select a listing. And again, this will let me pull this directly from the MLS. So I'm just going to pick a couple random ones. We're going to be really uh, stretching, the, stretching the, the state here, the country. Great. So I clicked on this listing. I need to select one photo I want to have as my main photo since I don't want a rose bush. We're going to go ahead and just do that. And as you can see here, it's going to auto fill in all of this information from the MLS. And I have an option to link this to a web address. This gives us a really great opportunity to utilize our agent sites. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go to mine. And let's see if I can actually find this exact property. Otherwise, I'm just going to use a random one. Ah, incognito mode, it's killing me here. Okay, I'm going to actually move us over to my regular screen. Incognito is not letting him access my location, which is making that not work, but we are all good. So at jasonspars.kw.com. Looks like we're selling some real estate in Baltimore. All right, there it is. So I'm simply going to copy this.
jump back over here. Link it to the web address. And then when I'm done, I click done. And now we can see this feature listing has been updated. And if someone clicks on here, it's gonna take them right over to this page on our agent site where they can view more photos, price, property description, all of the MLS information, information about the neighborhood, their commute to work, school information, student to teacher ratios, um, get connected with Keller Mortgage or Keller Covered, and most importantly, they have a direct line right to you where they can ask you questions, save this, or schedule a tour. Any questions about how I did that? So I'm not gonna fill out all three of these because we get the picture, right? Did one, we do them all. We add three more in here and we could be done. But maybe there's a few other features we wanna add. Like let's say all these properties are in the same neighborhood. And not only do we wanna give information right here for all those individual properties we have listed in the same neighborhood, but we also wanna drop in some marketing information about it. So what if I take this market snap widget and I drop it in here? So the green line on the screen is gonna dictate where this drops. It can be between any one of these, below it. I wanna see how it looks at the top. Nah, I like it at the bottom. So I'm gonna delete it and I'm gonna drop it at the bottom. Love that. So just like these, we need to edit it now. So I'm gonna click in here. I'm gonna click the pencil and I'm gonna type in a postal code. So this is gonna be 55408. Then it's gonna give me a list of all the neighborhoods in that postal code. We're just gonna stick with Kingfield. Then we say done. And this is gonna update a little map of the neighborhood that in theory, all these homes are in. The active statistics and the sold statistics. Now that's awesome. Now let's say we really wanna double down on our agent site and we wanna drive people to that agent site. I wanna give people to not only look at these listings, but just search the MLS in general. So maybe I'll also drop in a button here or maybe a text box first that says button and then a text box. I'm gonna have this text box say, Here, all right. Obviously, there's some uh, across the Courtney. We're going to keep it because that's funny. <laughs> I want to center that. Uh, we can change our font, et cetera, et cetera. And we can drop that in there. And then we have this button, click edit. I always go around it and we'll keep it with that KW color, which is gonna be CE011F. And I'm gonna link this to a web address and I'm just gonna drop in my agent site. Click done, whoops. Or real estate. Obviously, I need to make that button longer. So I'm actually going to adjust the width and I'm probably going to need to double that. So I'm going to do 250. There we go. So now this email goes out. Not only can they click and get the direct link for all of my featured listings, but they get great neighborhood information and they can click search here. And this is going to take them to my agent site where they can continue to search for real estate, sign up get added to my database. So not only did this become a tool for you to market your listings for your sellers, add touches to the people in your database, right? Bolster your 36 touch, but it can also work as a lead generation tool. For if someone who's not in your database gets wind of this or someone says, hey, check out this cool website I've been searching on and they sign up for it, they're automatically added to your database and as a new lead for you. And just as uh, a little preview. That's what it's going to look like when it sells. 
Whew. All right, any questions about the email builders? Awesome. Now, one of my favorite things about our email builder here, whoops, we're not there yet, ah. is of course we can get really custom, right? We can even create those emails from scratch from a blank template, but we also have the option to not have to really do anything at all, right? We have a lot of what I call out of the box emails. So let's say I wanna send an email about, probably not refinancing, <laughs> it's probably not the time to do that, um, but maybe you know low budget projects you can do to increase the value of your home. I'll just find one of these pre-built templates. I'm gonna click next. And right here, I have a nice sort of just generic email that I can send out without doing anything. And it's gonna give them three ideas for a DIY project that they can use to improve the value of their home easily this summer. I don't see anything wrong with just uploading that, adding it to a campaign and sending that out to everyone in your database. And you can still come in here and edit these completely if you want. So with these email builders, you can get as custom or as templated as you would like, but it has been, I, I don't think it's ever been easier to, to generate attractive, nice, and valuable email campaigns that we can send out to our entire databases. All right, let's take a break here. Any questions about anything we've covered? If you have to add your agent information at the bottom, or does that automatically populate it for you from CRM? That's a super good question. I'm um, sorry, I did not see who, who asked that, but- I don't will, know if I put my own information in there, but do I need to do that? Or does it automatically pull it? Yep, great question. Uh, so I'm gonna share my screen again, and I am going couldn't to- couldn't hear the question. Could you tell so, us her what? question was in regards to the information that was showing at the bottom of the email. When I showed preview, it had like my, my picture, my phone number, my email address. And I'll actually go ahead and I'll show you just for reference. So, the question was Does that information, is that automatically added in there or do I have to manually do it? So, what that question was referring to was this logo up here. And more importantly, this down here, right? My picture, license number, the link to my website, the download my app, and all this information down here. And it automatically pulls, but it automatically pulls from your marketing profile. So you do actually have to add all this information for it to automatically pull. And that was such a good question because it opens the door to show everyone where that is. So I'm gonna X out of here. So if you're looking at here and you go to preview and maybe, you know, there isn't a picture here, or this logo is like a blank generic space filler, or this information isn't correct, or it's just not here. All that means is that we need to go in and update your marketing profile. So to do that, we're actually gonna exit the designs app. And we're gonna go to our settings page. So to navigate to our settings page, we click on our names on the top right corner here. And I'll give you a tip. If your picture isn't here and it's just a silhouette, that's a dead giveaway. We need to work on your marketing profile. So we're going to go from here and we're going to go to settings. From settings, we go to connect settings, marketing profile. And this is that location where designs is going to pull from and auto brand all of that information on all of your footers and headers when you're building out these emails and other uh, marketing materials like your agent site. So we see we have photos, logos, information, the slogan you can add for yourself, military affiliation, bios, phone numbers, logos, compliance stuff, you know. Yeah, one thing I noticed is the website does not autofill because it doesn't have the asterisk. Um, so that is a design feature. So it will not put in your website as in um, jasonspars.kdb.com. It just says the word website. But when you click on that word website, so when it sends out the email, it's going to be a link. So when they click on that, it'll take them to your website. Um, to be honest, I kind of wish it did just say the website because I don't think that's intuitive to everybody. Um, but I was... Right when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is broken. This doesn't work. And then I realized, oh, it's just a clickable link. So it will take them to the website, but it's not going to autofill this information. And I think the reason being uh, is that some websites might be longer than others. 
and it might mess up the format of how that's set up so it couldn't be scalable for everybody, uh, but a really good observation and a really good question. And I don't think there's a way to change it. Well, actually there is, you can go on there and change it just like a text box. One more thing about the marketing profile. You're in there, you've saved it. Just make sure this green button is toggled on. And that means that you're giving command permission to use this information and apply it where it needs to go. Okay, any other questions? Sweet. Now there's one more thing I wanna show you. I have a couple minutes left and we may be able to make time for the video. I need to figure out how to share my screen best so I can get this for everybody. And I'm just gonna share my whole desktop. I apologize, it's a mess. We're gonna jump back in here. Now we have a ton of design templates. Maybe, just maybe, someone really likes Canva and that's okay because Canva is a really, really good tool for making marketing materials. It's all they do. I hope they're good at it. So we can use all the features of command without even having to use designs. If you're going through all this, you're like, this all looks great. Maybe there's a couple of features I like, but I just, I'm so used to designs or I'm so used to MailChimp or I'm so used to whatever other platform I'm using. I don't really want to change or it doesn't feel necessary I have to change. Well, it's okay because we have an opportunity to import designs from any platform right into here where we can then edit them and apply them to any campaign we want. So instead of saying create design, I'm gonna say import design. Then from here, I'm just gonna minimize this screen. Sorry, I have so many bars around from uh, the Zoom call. And I'm just gonna take this PDF that I had created, well, Bethany had created in Canva. I drag it and I drop it in here. You can also click in here and just search your computer for the file. This will take a moment. So I can see here, it's being uploaded into my templates. Now again, for reference, this is simply a PDF, right? These aren't individually made cells. This is all one image that I've uploaded in here. And the reason this takes a little while is because command doesn't just upload this into designs. It uploads it and it breaks apart every single feature so that if we wanna make any changes to it, we can. So we need to replace a couple fonts. Um, I'm just gonna, okay. Quick pixels. And that's just saying how it wants its size. It's not a very big deal. And then we have the opportunity to edit this. So even though this was uploaded as a PDF, <laughs> that wasn't a very good font I chose. We can now come in here and manually manipulate and edit all of these features, just like it was a design and command, right? I can come in here, I can change the colors. Oh, I don't recommend that. <laughs> that doesn't look very good. Oh, that was the background. Not saying I'm making this more attractive, but <laughs> we're having fun with it. Um, but you can see here, we can come in here and we can move all of this around. We can edit this template 100% if we so want to, or we can just build it perfectly upload it, download it into command or upload it into command. Then we can just send it out using our email campaigns or add it to a smart plan. But literally with this integration of being able to upload PDFs from any design platform, we, we have limitless potential with what we can do with KW command and designs. Any questions about this feature, please ignore the fact that I only use this tool to make the design worse. <laughs> Obviously um, you can make them uh, as nice as you want in here. Sweet. Um, we do have three minutes left. So if there are no other questions, 
I'm going to dive through and really quickly show you that video feature. Um, it only takes about 10 seconds and it's kind of fun. For the sake of information dumps, we're just going to get through everything today. Oh, definitely don't save that. Okay, so the last feature or design option we had, we did not get to, and that's this video feature. Now this one, there's really not a lot of customization to it, but what we can do is search for a neighborhood. Guess what one I'm gonna use? Inkfield, Minnesota, select and click next. It's gonna pull in all this information. Again, this is on that same 30 day monthly information poll that we use for the snapshots. So if you know that has changed, or if you have that data in front of you, this actually gives you the option to change this information. Double check, make sure this all looks good. I add my phone number. Now I can see here, I actually would wanna change this to a smaller logo. I do have a smaller logo I can use, but we don't have much time. So just know this logo will look a little weird and we're good. So I'm gonna click next. And this is gonna take about 10 seconds to do this video. While this is doing this, I'm gonna reshare my screen and optimize it for video sharing. Okay. So in that time, the video is done. And now I have this. That messed up logo I told you about. <laughs> so if we like that video, we can go ahead and save it. And then we can easily so share this on social media, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever we would like. Any questions about the videos before I exit screen share one last time? Good stuff. Well, look at that. We got it all. And I think this is a first because we ended right at 12. Before we leave, can I get an aha? Was there something that someone took from this that they're going to start using in their business this week? I have uh, been planning to send out a home value to my neighborhood, to my neighbors. Uh, you know, and I think uh, this is going to make it a little more impactful. I was just going to do like a a text Facebook post to the group, but I think I'm going to use uh, one of the templates with uh, some of the stuff that you've shown today. Awesome. Well, I love to hear it, Gene. I, I can't wait to hear how that goes. All right, everybody. Well, that ends our, our class for today. Uh, it has been recorded. If you do want to revisit this, this subject, watch this again, um, just reach out to your, your agent services, uh, front desk staff, and I'm sure they'll be able to get that to you. Otherwise, I look forward to working with you all in the future. Have a great rest of your week.